Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I'm Wanya Reese. And I'm Caitlin Heck, and we are inching closer to the weekend. I know, I cannot believe it, and this month is flying on by. All of it, like you said earlier, time flies when you're having a good time. Exactly, Courtney, but do you need a jacket this morning? No, not at all. You will want to bring maybe the umbrella, though, just in case. It's quite warm out there. You're looking live on top of Atrium Health Navicent. Take a look at this temperature. It's almost 70 degrees out there this morning. Quite the difference from the start of the week. You're also going to notice it's slightly muggy out there. Those dew points in the low 60s making it feel pretty uncomfortable. So when you walk out, it's going to feel very different. I mean, I forecasted it and it surprised me. 65 in Warner Robins and in Cochrane, we're at 67 in Unadilla, 66 in Milledgeville, and 66 in Wrightsville as well. We did have a few showers this morning in parts of Monroe County and Upson County. It looks like some light rain moving through the Thomaston area right now. And also a heads up in Taylor, Macon, Crawford and Peach. We had some heavier downpours roll through there maybe two or three hours ago, so the roads might be a little bit on the wet side there. Just something to keep in mind. Otherwise, you're dry and warm this morning. We will have the chance for an isolated strong to severe storm between around four and eight o'clock today. What we'll be looking for damaging winds, heavy rain, small hail, and also some frequent lightning. I'm going to time it all out for you hour by hour and talk about an unsettled weekend that's on the way too. Unfortunately, all of that is in my full forecast in a few minutes. <laughs> sinking in that's the problem uh, you hear it but it's uh, you just believe, believe it. it well this morning people in Eatonton are mourning the loss of a man they say that everyone knew that 74 year old Roy Embry uh, he died after an explosion at a farm Putnam County deputies and firefighters got called around 7 yesterday morning about a fire at Embry Farms when they got there, they found a fire burning inside of a shipping container. Investigators say that they do not suspect foul play. There was a business being operated from the inside of the container, um, and it had propane that was plumbed to the shipping container, and uh, it appears to be an accidental propane fire or explosion or burning, whichever term's right. This morning, the investigation is still ongoing. Embry Farm Services has been in business for several generations. Their services include fertilization, sand, gravel, and topsoil. We're now learning more about a fire last month at a metal finishing plant in Dodge County at the company's still on the road to recovery. Justin Fordham is the general manager at Valence Surface Technologies in Eastman. He says the state fire marshal is still investigating the cause of the flames, but that no chemicals burned in the March 27th fire. No one was hurt and the site is still in business since the fire didn't touch their second building, but the building where the fire broke out is heavily damaged and closed. Fordham says his first thought was his team and how to keep them employed. We are currently deploying our employees to our sister facilities throughout the United States, um, letting them work there, as well as we are deploying local teams here to help us with some of the cleanup and um, overhaul. Fordham says the company may take anywhere from six months to a year. Now they haven't started cleanup yet because the fire marshal is still investigating. Now to news from across Georgia. Some Delta Airlines employees will no longer see extra insurance costs. The Atlanta-based company dropped its $200 a month surcharge on employees not vaccinated against COVID-19. It applied to those who were on the airline's health plan. Delta CEO says they dropped it because they believe the pandemic has moved to a seasonal virus. The company put the surcharge in place last year. They credit the move with helping to get over 90% of their U.S.-based workers vaccinated. And starting next week, the Georgia Department of Public Health will move from daily to weekly COVID-19 data reporting. The state DPH says case counts and vaccination updates will go up on their website every Wednesday. That starts next week on the 20th. The last daily updates to the status report and vaccine dashboard will happen tomorrow. The health agency says weekly intervals provide a more complete picture than day-to-day -day changes when figuring out areas of concern or COVID-19's path in the state. In election news, political candidates continue to reach out to voters as the May primary is nearly a month away. Governor Brian Kemp and his family are hitting the campaign trail this week, including stops in central Georgia. The governor's team says that his bus tour will be in Milledgeville at Taylor's Cove at 830 this morning. Then he'll move to Sandersville, stopping at K. Olin Plaza Shopping Center at 10 a.m. Then it's off to Soperton. He'll be at the Dinnard Pond House at 230 this afternoon. One of the main candidates Governor Kim faces in the May Republican primary is former U.S. Senator David Perdue. He campaigned in Walton County earlier this week. That's in between Atlanta and Athens. Stacey Abrams has no challengers in the Democratic primary. The last day to register to vote for the May 24th primary is just over a week away on April the 25th.
Now to weather updates this morning. We now know more about the impact of last week's storms here in central Georgia. Now, yesterday, the list of confirmed tornadoes grew to 16 as the National Weather Service rated two more tornadoes. 12 hit last Tuesday, April 5th, while four tornadoes hit last Wednesday, the 6th. The two new tornadoes confirmed yesterday were in Bibb and Trulin counties. Meteorologists for the National Weather Service rated the tornado in Bibb as an EF1 with the highest wind gusts at 90 miles an hour. On Tuesday last week, a brief tornado touched down on the north side of Macon near Piedmont Hospital. It lifted after about three minutes as it crossed I-75. That EF1 tornado damaged several homes around north of Macon. A week ago, the Thornwood neighborhood had downed power lines, uprooted trees and debris all over the streets. Wreckage that people are still cleaning up today. Now, Stephen Bailey's home was one of those damaged homes, and a week later he says they are still working through it all. Well, this past week has been, a, I have to say, it's been a long week. Um, we did get our electricity back until Friday, and uh, then we, of course, we have the uh, uh, tree removers have shown up today, which is uh, moving things along. And he says most of the damage was to his chimney, the side of his home, and his backyard. Bibb County's Public Works Department is lending a helping hand when it comes to cleanup. This week, they started collecting storm debris with the help of Georgia's Department of Transportation. They're starting with the hardest hit neighborhoods first, including near Rosa Taylor Elementary. So if you have debris on your property, make sure you move it to the side of the road. Cut trees and limbs into sections of four feet or shorter. And to report piles of debris, call Public Works. The number is 478-803-0490 and tell them your address. The time is now 637. Unfortunately for those people last Tuesday, they still had Wednesday storms to get through too. So that kind of delayed the cleanup. Process. Exactly because I mean, it was on Wednesday that we saw a lot of warnings as well and sirens still going off. So now they're able to have a little better weather. We don't yes. have to worry about a, a super crazy potential severe mm -hmm. uh, threat, right Court? That's right. Yeah. And also, I mean, even for those tornado reports, not only did the weather impact the cleanup, but it also impacted the timeliness of the National Weather mm -hmm. Service meteorologists going out and surveying all of the areas that were impacted because 16 that ended up being the count. So pretty crazy. And yes, thankfully, while we do have a severe threat today, it is going to be very isolated and it doesn't look like we have a tornado threat today. So that is good news as yes, we were very, very active last week and it was very active yesterday out to our west in parts of Mississippi and Louisiana, parts of Tennessee. And thankfully we are not going to experience what they did, but I our thoughts are definitely with all the people out to the west because they had some pretty crazy activity yesterday, including multiple tornadoes. For us, we are going to get that same cold front now that did bring all of the severe weather yesterday. It is bringing a few showers this morning up towards Jasper County. Even parts of Monroe and Upson County have gotten some rain. Parts of Taylor, Macon, Crawford and Peach counties have gotten some fairly heavy downpours this morning. So just something to keep in mind as you're getting ready to head out the door. The roads might be slightly wet in some spots. Here's a look at the severe outlook today going all the way from the panhandle all the way up towards New York, so across most of the eastern seaboard, everyone for the most part in a level one out of five threat, with the exception of parts of New York actually that are in that level two out of five. What does this mean for us? While all of us are under this threat, that does not mean it's going to be a widespread threat for us. Level one out of five means it is going to be an isolated threat. And what we're going to be looking for gusty wind and any severe storms, 60 mile per hour wind gusts, stronger storms, we're looking at 40 to 50 mile per hour gusts. Small hail will be possible, also some frequent lightning and heavier down. So if you are out and about today running some errands later in the afternoon and all of a sudden thunder starts roaring, don't be heading out and about and just stay weather aware today. You don't want to be making your way around town as severe thunderstorms are rolling through. But like I said, it's isolated, so we're going to take you through it. A few showers will be possible this morning, and it's just simply going to be rain for your morning drive. You might need to quickly turn on your windshield wipers as we head through the afternoon. We continue to heat up and we have a lot of moisture in the atmosphere to work with. You are going to notice that as you head out the door today. Once all that moisture starts to rise with the heat of the day, we start to get that instability or fuel for storms and our cold front comes in and helps lift everything. Well, it's just going to lift isolated storms. You can see very isolated and that's what we're going to be watching for when it comes to any kind of strong to severe storm between the hours of four and eight o'clock. So the heat of the day just to around the sunset hour. Now we still could have some rain and storm activity as we head towards nine, 10 o'clock, but I don't anticipate any of that becoming severe could carry some rumbles of thunder and heavy rain, but I I think that'll stay below severe limits for us. Temperature wise today, mid
mid to upper 70s and some of us might even head into the low 80s if you're south of Macon. Tomorrow morning we'll wake up to a completely different feel. It'll be wonderful. Temperatures in the upper 40s and low 50s with that humidity back to that lower end. Tomorrow lots of sunshine in upper 70s and low 80s as high pressure filters in behind our front that will stall to the south and we're going to get wedged between two fronts over the weekend. A short wave will roll in Saturday morning. That'll knock on our door late Saturday morning offering us a rain chance. Could have a few rumbles of thunder as we head into Saturday afternoon. Our second front moves in Sunday, so unfortunately that will keep us unsettled for Easter Sunday for the afternoon, especially that's when I think we'll experience most of our rain and storm activity. Sunday will be for the afternoon and evening. We'll keep a rain and storm chance for Monday of next week, but it does look like we'll be cooler and dry for Tuesday and Wednesday.